Hello everyone, my name is Brittany and I would like to welcome you to the very first vlog for Be The Influence. You just gotta be you. So the title for our first vlog is going to be the chain reaction of a new attitude. And I'm basically going to explain how your attitude impacts your future. So I want us to begin by visualizing an apple. Before you eat the apple, you clean it, make sure there are no scratches or bruises. You eat the apple and then you throw away what's left. Now the part that we throw away is the most important part of the apple, it's the core. I call the core the most important part because it's what houses the seeds and those seeds are responsible for growing the apple to begin with. So imagine if at the core we have a malfunction and the seeds have a malfunction and the apple would have a malfunction. It's the same thing with our cells. So if at your core you have malfunctions, then everything you produce, everything you give off will have a malfunction which is why it's important to do your core work before God can allow you to walk in whatever he's purposed you for. Now, personally, I remember I was wondering, Brittany, how are you ending up in all these situations, the situations that lead to adversity? Like, how is this happening to you? What are you doing wrong? So I began to look at myself and I realized I was big on the blame game. It was everyone's fault but my own. Ha, I was also in a season of wanting people to understand what I understood. You know, I wanted you to see things my way. And if you didn't, then you were wrong. You know, Basically, I'm right, you're wrong. It's like that one picture that was going across social media with the two men. And they're standing across from each other. And it's a number in the middle. And from one angle, it looks like a six. And from the other angle, it looks like a nine. And so they go back and forth trying to make the other person see what they see. In reality, is based on perception, which is why it is so important to understand that the only thing you can change, the only thing that you have control over is yourself. So to me, it's important to understand the things that you're looking to change. So I looked up the definition for the word attitude. Attitude is defined as a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something, typically one that is reflected in a person's behavior. So the first thing that stood out was the word settle. So when you settle on something, you've basically negotiated this thing or you've thought about it over and over again. So essentially meditated on it. You basically, you decided on it which means it's something you can control. If you can make the decision, then it's in your control, making your attitude in your control. Then the definition says, typically one that is reflected in a person's behavior. So to me, this proves your attitude influences the way that you react. And then the way that you react is what manipulates your day-to-day -day life. So basically, if you are able to decide on or settle on this negative attitude, then you give yourself this negative life, a life full of mess, drama, doubts, fears, the whole nine. Now, I know somebody in your life has said to you the famous saying, be it a grandma, a aunt, someone, that God can't bless mess, which is true to a certain extent. I personally like to say God can't bless unattended mess. And I say this because imagine if you're in mess and you're not focused on it, you're having fun, living life, and God is in the back creating a blessing for you. If God gives you the blessing and you're in this toxic state, then the blessing is now toxic. He's not going to do that. But if you are in mess, but you're trying to learn how to clean it up, learn where it came from, you know, how to get out of it, you're focused on it, then God might 
shine this blessing. You know, he might show you a little bit of it as a way of encouraging you to continue to clean, which is why it's important to do the work because as God sees you working, he's going to begin to reward you. Even if he doesn't give you the entire thing, he's going to give you something because as his children, we are encouraged to continue moving. We're encouraged to level up. And I say level up because I like to consider the next phase, moving forward. And so in order to level up, you have to look like the level you're trying to get to. If you can't look exactly like that level, then you must resemble it. God likes to see us doing work. He wants us to move forward. I remember as I began to journey, um, there became a point where I felt like no one understood me. And it was frustrating because I could feel God, you know, I could feel the change in my life. I felt like it was time to walk. And so I had this passion. I had this fire and no one understood anything I had to say. So at first I was like, dang, what's wrong with people? <laughs> but then I had to step back and look at myself and say, Brittany, you're the problem. I learned that while I had this passion, while I had this fire, I was mismanaging it. It came off as hostility. People felt like I was more so talking at them instead of talking to them. When you are overly passionate, it's mismanaged. Because people were more so looking at the fact that, dang, she hostile, dang, she angry. Instead of understanding my message, instead of understanding what I had to say, because I know it's cliche, but it's true that delivery is key. And your delivery comes from your attitude. Because like I said, my mindset was, dang, what's wrong with them? That's my attitude. That's my attitude getting in the way of what God has purposed for me. It's important to focus on you. And you don't want people around you who are just going to deal with you the way that you are. Because in reality, the people that are truly connected to your blessing are not going to just deal with you the way that you are. If you have people that are dealing with you the way that you are, you might want to get away from them. Which brings up the next point. <laughs> so growing up, I would always say, I don't believe in birds of a feather flock together. I said that a lot. And it was because I had friends growing up and it was, we were a group and we were not the same. I felt like we all had our own identity. None of us were the same person. We did not do all of the same things. But it wasn't until I got older and I began to grow that I realized, yeah, we were kind of the same people. Because while we did our own things, we still did our things in the same way. You know, we didn't do the same exact things, but when we went off, we were still acting like each other. Bringing up the Bible verse, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Now that's Proverbs 13 and 20. Because when you're around people, they influence you. So let's imagine if you're in a situation and you're my friend. And I went through that situation. Now I didn't do it right. You know, I didn't come out with the lesson I should have came out with. It's probably coming back to me. And I advise you in your situation. I'm going to advise you based on what I did. Or if I've never even seen that situation and you're in it and I give you advice, that's not wise advice because I've never been there. I don't know anything about that. So it's important to know who's around you. It's overly important on your journey to be influenced by some wise people because iron sharpens iron. It's very true. So I know some of you are looking at me like, so I'm just supposed to be happy all the time. No, not the case because stuff does happen. Things happen that are out of your control all the time, which is why it's important to understand that you have to control you. Another Bible verse. This one says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. So as things happen, you have to have that voice in you that's able to speak over doubts, that's able to speak over fears and limitations and insecurities because it comes. On the journey, it's going to come. 
it's inevitable. But what God wants to equip you with is how to handle it, how to have peace in the pain, how to find joy in the pain. That's all it's really about. When it comes to your attitude, it's like your defense mechanism. It's your weapon. It's, what, it's one of the many things you'll use to fight with. You got to stay in control of yours. So as situations come that are out of your control, it's important to know how to find your balance. And so I like to regroup. I am the queen of regrouping. Literally, I will PTO for a day or two. I'll go on do not disturb for a few hours. Whatever regrouping takes for me, I'm going to get it done. And so regrouping can be a list of things, but it's up to you to figure out what that is for you. Me personally, I love to pray. I will pray to regroup. I will read a word to regroup. A lot of people exercise. I've heard of that one. Meditation, journaling. I've heard of journaling, music. Uh, one of the big ways to regroup is a therapist. Therapy is a gift from God. To have someone to hear you and understand you and then kind of make it make sense is golden. Get a therapist. It's important to regroup. So whatever it is for you, find your way to regroup. And at the end of it all, I can honestly say that as you change your attitude, it's going to change your heart. It's inevitable. And as your heart changes, it's going to change your character. I like to use the Grinch to explain that chain. So with the Grinch, uh, we all know the story. He had basically decided that Christmas was overrated, that the Who's did too much when it came to Christmas. That formed his attitude. He had settled on that attitude, which essentially formed his heart. So as his heart got smaller and smaller and smaller, it formed his character. No one wanted to be around the Grinch. Everybody left him where he was. No one wanted a relationship with him due to his character, which came from his heart, which was influenced by his attitude. But then there was Cindy who decided, all right, everybody needs a chance. Let's try to fix this. So in the long run, Cindy was able to influence the attitude of the Grinch, you know, changing his heart towards Christmas, which essentially changed his character. Now, it took a while. Because if you remember, they had invited him to the one party and he kind of had a mishap, you know. But eventually, he got it together. Which proves that on your journey, it's not easy. You are going to have mess ups. You are going to have mishaps. You're going to do stuff to where it's like, dang, why did I do that? Because we all have those moments. Nobody is perfect. That's why Jesus had to die for us. Because we're not perfect. So as you journey, keep going. Keep pushing. Don't stop. Which is why I'm building Be The Influence. We all need someone who we can confide in. Someone who understands when we mess up. Someone who understands when we have a bad day. You do not have to do it alone. So, I'm not sure where you're looking at the video, but I want you to share, subscribe, like, whatever you can do to get this video to the next person because it's important as we journey that we stay together, that we build this community of Be The Influence. I want you to be able to be your own influence. And once you're able to be your own influence, then you can go and influence somebody else. So below the video or on the top, wherever you're looking at it, I am going to put three questions. Now with these three questions, take your time. Don't rush, um, answer them over a few days. You know, you don't have to answer them all at once. I want them to be true to yourself and I want you to keep them with you until our next video. Uh, feel free to ask me questions, message me, comment, whatever you need to do to stay connected, to feel connected. I'm open, I want to listen. Seriously, I'm here for you. You just gotta be you